what is going on everybody my name is Michael Levan thank you so much for joining me today as always and in this video we are going to officially kick off the Kubernetes for Network Engineers series over here at Packet Pushers now in the first video we're going to go over a little bit of Kubernetes architecture and then we're going to take a look at one of the Kubernetes clusters and kind of see exactly what's happening in all the internal workings and all that good stuff so with that Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at more of a basic style architecture and then we'll look at a more advanced one. Now, let's say you're right here, you're the developer. When you interact with Kubernetes, you're interacting with something called, well, it's sometimes called the API server, it's sometimes called the control plane, it's sometimes called master node. You're interacting with what is an API. So let's say that you're creating a Kubernetes manifest to deploy some application. And when you run that Kubernetes manifest, you're actually doing a post request to the API server or the control plane, whatever you want to call it. Now, the control plane has a few different things. The API server, the controllers, the scheduler. So the controllers are essentially looking at the state of your cluster and making sure that everything is all good, essentially. The scheduler tells pods what worker nodes they should go on. Now, speaking of worker nodes, what are those? Well, you'll see one right here and one right here. Now, the worker nodes are really where all of your pods and your pods are running containers, where all of those pods, all of the deployments, all of the actual workloads that you're dealing with are sitting on. They're all sitting on the worker node. So you have your container runtime, which could be Docker, that's actually getting deprecated for CRIO, but essentially any container runtime. So you got container D, you got CRIO, you got Rocket, there's a bunch of different ones. And then you have all of your pods, and your pods are what are running your workloads. And then of course you have your cube proxy, which is doing all of the internal networking between pods, containers, etc. Now let's flip over to a little bit more of an advanced style architecture diagram. So you're a developer here and you're running kubectl commands, right? So kubectl create minus elf deployment.yaml because all Kubernetes manifests are in YAML files. Now, as you can see, again, even using the kubectl commands, you're hitting the API server directly and that's the control plane or the master node, whatever you want to call it. And you're doing post requests against that API server. Now, again, it also has the scheduler, the control manager, which is what we just talked about right here, the controllers. And then you also have etcd, which I didn't point out right here, but etcd is essentially like the Kubernetes database. It's a key value store. It holds all of the backend data for the Kubernetes cluster. So it's sort of like a database. And then you have your worker nodes here dealing with pretty much anything that has to do with any workloads running, any pods, any deployments, etc., on your cluster. Now, with that being said, let's flip over to this cluster that I have right here. Now I have a cluster running in Azure Kubernetes service and this is sometimes referred to as a Kubernetes service in the cloud or managed Kubernetes, something like that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna flip over to my terminal really quick. And with my terminal up, I'm gonna run kubectl get nodes. And now as you can see, I pretty much ran a get request or get API call to this Kubernetes cluster. And then what happened was I was able to see my nodes here. Now, if I run kubectl get pods, all namespaces, what this means is show me all pods from all namespaces and what namespaces are, is they essentially segregate different workloads. So if you don't want workloads to essentially be next to each other, so to speak, you can put them in namespaces. Now notice here, we have our Q proxy, for example. And then we have a bunch of other pods running in Cube System. Now, Cube System is, I guess I like to think about it like the core components that are needed for an operating system to run. So there are certain files in etcd on a Linux server that are needed for Linux to run. This is essentially the same thing. Now, the Kubernetes networking in the background is done via Q proxy, and Q proxy handles all of the internal components of communication between pods. And then you also need DNS, right? Because you need to be able to specify host names for services, all of that good stuff, which we'll get to in a later video. But as you can see, 
it's actually just running core DNS under the hood. And this is for all Kubernetes clusters. All Kubernetes clusters are simply running core DNS for the DNS controller underneath the hood. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up the video. We took a look at what Kubernetes is underneath the hood, the architecture, and then we took a look at some pods that are running. And now in the next videos, we're going to get way more hands-on with all of the networking components inside of Kubernetes. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you again next time.